Okay, this is a introductory video to thermochemistry for Ms. Cool's class. There is a set of companion notes that goes through this with you. Um, for this section, um, hopefully by the end you'll be able to define the terms thermochemistry, energy, temperature, and then um, the different characteristics of endothermic and exothermic reactions. Um, you'll be able to describe the direction of heat flow and what factors affect heat flow. Okay, so thermochemistry is the study of heat changes that occur during a chemical reaction. Um, we've talked about bonds and different chemical substances like molecules and ionic compounds. And those bonds, like when we have H2O, like a water molecule, these bonds right here that I'm drawing an arrow to, okay, those store chemical potential energy. Okay, so when we break bonds, we're going to be releasing energy, and when we make bonds, we um, take in energy, kind of roughly speaking. It's not that simple, but that's the general idea, that those bonds kind of hold energy. That's what's keeping the elements together. Now, energy, as a technical term, is the capacity for doing work or supplying heat. Um, work is not like going to a job. Work is actually doing something. Thing, like maybe pushing on something um, or pulling, just some very basic concepts there. If you go on to take physics, they actually spend a lot more time talking about the definition of work. Now, energy is weightless, odorless, and tasteless. If you remember way back to the beginning of the school year, we talked about the difference between matter and energy, and matter is something... Um, that takes up space and has mass or has volume and mass. Whereas energy does not take up volume and does not have mass. It's not something we can actually touch. However, we detect energy because of its effects on its surroundings. Now there's a lot of different types of energy. I want to say there's like eight different types of energy. So there's chemical potential energy that we just talked about, but there is light energy. So like from the lights in the classroom, the light from the sun, there's um, radioactive energy, which we talked about back in unit two, but this one's going to be thermal energy. So heat energy primarily. So heat is a form of energy that can be transferred from one object to another due to the temperature difference between them. So that is a very important point. If the temperature is equal, there is no energy transfer. So things that are same temperature are not really transferring energy um, back and forth. But when things are two different temperatures, then you're going to have a transfer of energy until things come out the same. Okay. So ultimately things will be the same temperature. So think about if you're holding somebody's hand and your hand is hot and their hand is cold. Ultimately you guys come to close to the same temperature if you hold hands long enough. Now, how does this happen? Well, Heat flow is what accounts for those um, the temperature being able to change. And heat flow is affected by the motion of molecules. Now these two points right here, oops, let me back up. So these two points right here are extremely important, okay? So the motion of molecules and the fact that heat always travels from high temperatures to lower temperatures. Okay, so those are questions that I always ask on assignments and on quizzes. So occasionally I get somebody saying that heat transfers from left to right, that is not true, okay? It is from high temperatures for, to low temperatures. Okay, so here I've got my little GIFs moving again. So if I've got um, an ice cube in my hand, the heat is flowing from my hand to warm up the ice cube. Or in this case here, in the animated GIF down here at the bottom, the ice is being warmed up by the environment. So the air plus the countertop are transferring the energy to 
um, the ice cube and that's what's causing it to melt. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about phases, solid, liquid, and gas in the third section of this unit. And we talk about more what's happening on a molecular level, but in this last animated GIF right here, okay, we're applying heat to this bottom left. Um, atom, if you will, and you can see that heat in the red is being transferred to the blue ones. It's spreading out. And then those little red lines that are around the spheres are to show that it's vibrating, it's moving. Okay, so that's what's happening here in this animation. Okay, um, is you're getting that vibration and that movement happening. So temperature and heat are not the same thing. Okay, that's really important. I'm going to hammer you guys on that. So if I bring back here my pen, okay, temperature is different than heat very different. So sometimes we use those terms interchangeably, but I will correct you on it at times and say, what's the temperature? What's the heat? Because in the second section, you're going to get a formula and it's going to have both heat and temperature in the same chemical formula. Now this definition of temperature right here, really important. That is going to come up in this unit and the next unit and the unit after that. Temperature is the measure of the average kinetic energy of atoms and molecules. Now that kinetic energy is movement. Wow. Okay. So things that are moving, the more kinetic energy, the faster the molecules move and the higher the temperature. So that also means the lower the kinetic energy, the slower the molecules move and the lower the temperature. So if we look here, this one is going to be my solid. This one will be liquid or gas, or we could say this one is a low temperature and this one here is a high temperature and I'll back it up again so that the animation is moving and you can see but the low one is on the left the high one is on the right so the higher temperature is causing these molecules to move more they're vibrating more bouncing around so as I was saying, temperature and heat are not the same thing. Temperature we can measure with thermometers. That's what we're used to measuring temperature with. Um, we can't measure heat directly. We can only measure those changes in heat. And we will be measuring those changes in heat using a tool called a calorimeter. And, uh, oops, let's spell it right, calorimeter. So calor, meaning heat, hot, for those of you that are familiar with Spanish, and then meter to measure. So um, that's what we're going to do a lab on in this unit. So really we can just detect if heat is absorbed or released. And that's gonna bring us to our last set of definitions with has to do with absorbing and releasing heat. So with absorbing heat, absorbing heats are called endothermic reactions. So endothermic means, endo means in, and therm means heat. So heat is going into a reaction, okay? Um, that means when I'm looking at my Q or my delta H, Okay, they are going to have a positive sign here. They are going to be plus. Okay, now what does Q or delta H mean? They mean heat. And again, in the next unit, we'll put, or not the next unit, but the next lecture, we'll put some numbers on it and you'll see that. Um, when you're looking at a chemical equation, that means the heat will appear on the reactant side. Sometimes they say that heat is, um, they'll just use the word heat, or sometimes they'll say joules, which is a measure of heat, or calories. So calories are also heat, a measure of heat. 
Endothermic reactions feel cold when you touch them. Okay, so there's really no such thing as cold. There's just an absence of heat. What we detect as cold is heat leaving your hand and heading into somebody else's hand or the ice cube or the flask. So again, in this little animated GIF that I have going on here, this is an endothermic reaction because it feels like that the the flask is sucking the heat away from your hand. And since the heat is leaving your hand, it actually feels cold. The last one is the way you can tell an endothermic reaction is by looking at a graph. And so this graph down here in the bottom right hand corner is called a reaction coordinate diagram. And we are going to see these again, not just on the next slide, but in another unit. And so when you're looking at a reaction coordinate diagram, you're looking at the height difference between the products here and the reactants right there. So when the products are at a higher level, then the reactants, you have an endothermic reaction. Heat is going in. So again, we'll come back to these diagrams. Um, you don't need to worry about the term activation energy at this point in time, but at some point later, we'll discuss it again. So that's endothermic reactions. For the other side, you can probably figure out the rest. Okay, so our next ones release heat. Those were absorbing heat. These will be our exothermic reactions. And instead of heat going in, this time heat will go out. And so since heat is leaving the system, like here in my flame or in my explosion, it's being absorbed by my hand and it's going to feel hot to us. So just like the others, the Q now and or the delta H is a negative. For endothermic, it was positive. So now exothermic, it's the opposite, which is a negative. Heat will be on the product side of the reaction. So that means on the right hand side of the arrow. I just got done saying it's going to feel warm or hot if you are touching it. And the products will be lower than the reactants in one of these diagrams. So here's my reactants now. Here's my product. So you can see the products are at a lower level on this reaction coordinate diagram, okay? And we've actually felt both endo and exothermic reactions in the lab. Sometimes I tell you guys to be sure to feel the test tube or feel the beaker and, um, and you're able to detect those heat changes. Okay, so let's just do a real quick check for understanding. Um, are the following reactions endothermic or exothermic? So you mix two chemicals together and the beaker gets cooler. So is that endothermic or exothermic? Well, the beaker is going to feel cooler to the touch. So we are going to call that endothermic because the heat is leaving your hand and going into the beaker. So it feels cold. Okay, delta H is a negative 321 kilojoules. So that's my unit there. So this negative sign right there tells me that it is exothermic. All right? Next one, A plus B plus 63 kilojoules makes AB. Okay, so here I've got this 63 kilojoules. I have to ignore the plus sign. It's part of a reaction. And in fact, if I look at this, it is on the left-hand side of the reaction. That means it's a reactant. And with heat is on the reactant side, it is endothermic because you are having to put heat in to that reaction. Okay. This here, now notice again, it's a plus sign, but heat is on the product side. So since heat is on the product side, we will call this an exothermic reaction. Okay, so I hope that clarifies for you um, some of the things in that chart. The diagrams are pretty easy to pick out. You just need to compare those, but um, sometimes dealing with the delta H or the products versus reactants confuses students initially.